um, let's say a stock photograph um, in there. Well, then, then, whoops. That's our home page. And that's how it looks. Notice a few things. The margins are flexible, but the size of the content isn't. All right. Um, in, in just about everything we do, there's alternatives that are fixed, and there are, there are alternatives that are flexible. And generally speaking, the flexible ones are better, because the flexible ones allow you to sort of resize uh, your screen and have that taken account of. All right. So this is a little bit flexible. The margin is flexible, yet the size of the container is not. All right. After we, after we do this for a few more days, we're going to talk about making our sites mobile compatible. And then we'll look at how the impact of these sort of things when you have, um, uh, when you're viewing it on a mobile device. We can already sort of look here simply by going by developers tools and saying we want to view this in a mobile device. And that really doesn't look terribly good on a mobile device. All right. At any rate, we'll talk more about that later. I'm going to make another version that has the same basic structure, but I'm going to just vary a few things up just for the heck of it. Um, I'm going to give a background image, and I am going to make this, the, the width of the content flexible. So that will be the two things that I do. Um, something for the wallpaper. I don't know. I suppose it doesn't really matter. Go back to that one. I'm going to copy this. I'm actually going to rename this one to Star Wars 1. And then I'm going to make a copy of the folder and We'll call it Star Wars 2 and so on. So when we're done, we'll probably have four, five, or six of these different versions by the time we finish with this, either today or next Monday. So Star Wars 2, I'm going to go and I'm going to put the image here. I'm going to rename that BG PNG. I'm going to go in my CSS file. And I'm going to put a background of it of a URL, bg.png. Now if we look at that, it doesn't work.
All right, why doesn't it work? Well, that's a good question. What are we going to do? How are we going to fix this? I gave it my best shot. I sure remember that that's what it's supposed to look like. But it doesn't work. I actually know what's wrong with it, but I'm going to pretend that I don't. All right? When you're writing a paper in English class, you have spell check and grammar check to tell you if you did something wrong. Is there anything like that for web technologies? And the answer is yes. There are things called code validators. All right? And what we're going to do, um, and this brings up a couple of other points that I'll bring up, is I'm going to go visit the code validator, which is part of the w3c.org. And I'm going to go look at their CSS validator. I can either upload a file or give the address or a file, or I can copy and paste my CSS code here. Let me copy and paste my CSS code and, t and see if it gives me an error. Let's try that again. Copy and paste the CSS code and see if it gives me an error. It does. And again, these things are validators. They're like if any of you have written C sharp code, they're error messages that are, are given from a computer's perspective. So they're not necessarily going to make um, immediate sense. All right, you have to spend a little bit of time deciphering them. The other thing that's true is sometimes um, there is um, there are cases um, where um, one thing that you do wrong can trigger a bunch of error messages. So, for example, tell me background URL is not a background color. They want to know what the problem is here. Well, I could say background image. I can still say background, though. The problem is, is that there should be no space between here and there. Now, it didn't tell me, hey, there should be no space between URL. But it told me it had a problem with the URL. And that was enough for me to spark my memory to say, oh, that shouldn't have a space. Or if it didn't spark my memory, I could always Google. CSS background image, and it would show me how to set that. And notice there's no space there. Background image, again, is one of those um, shortcut properties where you can specify background and URL, or you can just or you can specify background dash image, background dash color. So I can go up here and get rid of the space, and I should be good to go. Oops. All right, there we have that on our um, on top of that. Now the problem is, of course, that um, the text is hard to read now, and again, we could fix this a couple different ways depending on what, what we want to do. One way would be to put, uh, to edit the image to sort of make it washed out like a watermark. You would set low contrast and you'd make it very bright would be one way to handle it. Um, this would be tough to figure out a color that would work against this because this has um, a mix of bright colors, the yellow, and the dark colors, the black. So it's not like we could find a color that would stand out against both of those, although maybe red would, although that might look ugly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the trick of putting a background that's transparent or partly transparent underneath the certain elements. So opacity 50%. Let's try that for each of these.
I think it also told me there should be no dash in that. So we'll put opacity 50% for these four sections. Nice thing is, is because this is a change to the CSS, I don't have to make it on every page because all the pages share the same CSS. Save that, refresh. All right. I think it's supposed to be 0.5. There we go. All right. And I need to give them a background color. Finally, they have that. Well, <laughs> I'm just not winning today, am I? I could probably then make the, the font color white or black instead of uh, white now. And I could make the link have a color of, we'll make it a darker gray. All right, there you go. Um, well, we can see it. Um, I could make it uh, a little less see-through. How would I make it a little less see-through? Well, it is partly transparent now. So point two would actually make it more transparent. I would make, want to make a higher number. So I could make it like a point seven, let's say. Let's actually change these, let's change them to different numbers to see which one is better. So I'm making the navigation point 9, the section point 8, the header point 7, and we'll make the footer point 3. That way we could look at all of them and decide which one we like. All right, see that's more see-through, I don't like that. This one's not bad. This one I kind of like because you can still sort of see it poking underneath there. But, uh, and that was a nav, so I'll make it 0.9 for all of them. All right, there we go. All right, not bad. A um, few things. Notice that the S in Star Wars is right up against the edge of the container. All right. How can we put some space there? Margin put space between things. All right. So if I wanted, so the next very next question I would ask: How do I put space here? Would be a margin question. Here's I want to put space here. That is a padding question. So I can go in and I can put a padding, and I'll do this just on the header to start, padding of 10 pixels. So notice now the Star Wars has space before the S. So I'm just going to go and do that to all of them.
All right? That had the advantage of pushing things together and removing the space in between as well. Now, one of the other things I want to do is I want to make it so that as I resize this, this area resizes. So I can do that by, instead of giving a width of 600 pixels, I can give a width of, say, 60%. No. Okay, so now this will change. It's bigger there, and it gets smaller there. It even gets very small if you let it. One thing that you can do is you can give a certain minimum width to it, so it won't get any smaller than an amount. So maybe we'll make it so it doesn't get any smaller than this. So I'm going to put a minimum width on here of 400 pixels. So we'll get no smaller than that. All right, so now it's bigger, it'll get smaller, smaller, smaller. There's a point where it stops getting any smaller. That's a nice sort of compromise between having something that's flexible and changes with the width of the, with the monitor and something that um, doesn't, isn't so flexible that it gets to be a very, very thin column by putting a minimum width on it. That's something I like to do a lot. Okay? Now, we're going to go over a couple of other ways to do layouts. And um, before we do that, I'd like to talk about the three, three or four elements of what's called the CSS box model. All right. We've already talked about a couple of them. You can define the width or the minimum width. You can define margins. You can define padding. Let me draw on here what these properties mean. The width is how much space is available for content. So if I make this 600 pixels, then there's 600 pixels available from there to there. If I make that 60%, then there's 60% of the entire screen. Whenever we give a percent for the width, it's the percentage of the screen space that's available for it. We then have padding, which extends in four directions. That's the space from the edge of the content to the edge of the box. All these block elements we can think of as being boxes. All right, that's where they say the CSS box element. They're like little rectangles. They can have heights assigned. They can have widths assigned. If they don't have a height assigned, it will make it as high as it needs to be. If they don't have a width assigned, it will make it 100% of the available width. The other property that we have is we have a border property, where we can specify a border. And finally, we have a margin, which is a space between 
this box and its neighbor. Margins don't add up. All right? So let me go and put a top margin. of 10 pixels. Yeah. I'm going to go and I'm going to put for each of these, I'm going to have a margin right and left auto, margin top 10 pixels. Actually, I can do that easier. That's correct. margin. We'll do 20 pixel auto. And I'll do that for each of these. What does that mean? It means the top margin is 20. The right margin is auto, which means it will be centered. The left margin, or the bottom margin is 20. And the left margin is centered. So there's space between them. Now, we don't get 40 pixels between them, though. This base is 20 pixels. All right? You don't add up margins. Look at it this way. If I have a box, and this one has a bottom margin, of 20 pixels. This guy has a top margin of 20 pixels. A bottom margin of 20 pixels says that whatever's below it can't be closer than 20 pixels. A top margin of 20 pixels says whatever's above it can't be closer than 20 pixels. So 20 pixels between them satisfies both those conditions. So it's not going to add them up and say, well, I have 40 pixels between them now. All right? And that makes sense when you think about it. You're saying, how close should this guy be to its nearest neighbor? Now, if this was 30 pixels, the top was 30 pixels and the bottom was 20 pixels, what do you think this would be? Be 30 pixels. Because this guy says it can't be closer than 20 pixels. This guy says it can't be closer than 30 pixels. Well, if I made the mar browser makes the margin 30 pixels, then both of those are satisfied. You all know what this means when I specify the margin like this, right? When I specify multiple values for the margin, 20 pixel auto. That means that the top margin is 20 pixels. The right margin is auto, the bottom margin is 20 pixels, and the left margin is auto. So it repeats those two times, and it goes clockwise. Top, right, bottom, left. So that's what it means when I say margin 20 pixels auto. Other thing that we can add is border. So I'm going to add a border. And what kind of border should I add? I'll add a yellow border. How can we get, how can we match this color exactly? I don't even know if that will look good. How can I match that exactly? If I take the eyedropper and click on it, it'll show me, but it doesn't tell me what the code of that is. Darn. Yes, it does. That is 255, 232, 31. So 255, 232, 31. So. I'm going to give each one of these a border of 
see what that looks like. I'll do it just for the header now, and then if I like it, I'll do it for all of them. All right, not bad. I'll go and give each of these, each of these guys a border. We'll look at the border style in a second. That's all right. So this is a page that we're left with. So notice what the width of the page is, uh, the width of each of those blocks. The width of those blocks is the margin plus the border plus the padding, all right, plus the width. That will give you the total width of that. So in other words, if I make something a certain width, That's not the width of the whole thing. It's the width that's available for the content. And you have to add the padding and the border and any margin to get the total size that it takes up. Now, border is one of them compound properties. I can specify border two different ways. I can specify border by specifying the individual properties. So I can say border color RGB 255, 232,31. border style dotted border width 5px. So that's one way I can do it, by specifying the individual properties. And a lot of properties like this. The background is like that. I can say background image or I can just say background. With border, I can combine all these into one style rule, which is usually the way I do it. Border, RGB, 255, 232, 31, 5px, dotted. The browser's smart enough to sort out what is what. It knows that RGB must be the border color, right? It knows that 5px has to be the width, and it knows that dotted has to be the style type of the border. Dotted isn't a color name, so that couldn't be the color. So when you have these shorthand properties, each of the properties can only be one thing, so the browser knows how to apply it. Now your question about the different style uh, types for border. Border style, not border style type. Here are the ones that are possible. You can also specify borders individually. So you could put a border underneath it and, and not over top of it. Yeah. So you could put a border on just one side. Or you could have different borders for the top and for the bottom.
talk about the shorthand property. You can also have a rounded border if you specify a border radius. Let's go and do that. Almost hard to tell. Let's make it much bigger. All right, there we go. Now again, why do you do all these things? You do all these things because it makes sense for the project that you're doing them for. You do all these things to draw attention, to help the user visually organize your page, to create a mood on your page. The dotted border, I think, kind of looks good here because it's reminiscent of a, of a movie marquee, all right, where you have the lights going around the side. So, kind of works in my mind. Again, it's not like I'm spending hours on this to get the perfect design. I just want to demonstrate some things, all right. Um, the rounded corners of the navigation. Um, are nice because that sets off the navigation, right? If three things on the page have squared borders and one of them has rounded borders, your eye is drawn to the one that's different, all right? And it's different for a reason. That's the navigation. This further emphasizes the navigation on the page, all right, by just doing something small and subtle like this, all right? So we use these things not just because, gee, we learn how to do all these things, so we're going to go crazy and do as many things as we can. We try to use them in a purposeful way that will draw attention to things, that will help the user organize the page. All right? We could take our glasses off if we want, and we can see that this page has four sections, all right? simply by virtue of the way that it's set up like that. All right. So that's a good part of the box model. Width, height, margin, border, and padding. These attributes pretty much only exist for block elements. You can put them in for uh, block uh, display equals inline block elements, though, if, there's, if you want to put a border around a link, for example. All right, let's say we want to go for another kind of layout altogether. All right, we're going to save this. Like I said, we're going to go through and we're going to create a bunch of layouts. We're going to do something similar to what you're doing for your next homework assignment, where you have one page. You only have to have one page in your case, but you're going to make a copy of it and apply a second style sheet to it. All right, this is a layout I'm going to go for here. I'm going to go for a layout that matches this wireframe. where I have the banner on the top, the navigation on the side with the navigation links vertical, my section over here that contains the content, and the footer over here. Now, there's a couple ways to do this, and we'll discuss the advantages and disadvantages of them. The first, the most straightforward way of doing this is using what's called fixed positioning. Fixed positioning is where you specify where this corner is going to appear on the screen. You specify the top and the left. You can also specify bottom and right, but usually because we tend to read down and across, we specify the top and the left. So I'm going to make a copy of this. And we'll call it three.
Yeah. Well, they don't have to be your pages, but you could make them pages like outside. Okay. Yeah. Notice I'm not touching the HTML, by the way. Everything we're doing now is CSS stuff. All right. I'm going to get rid of all of the CSS that we have in here. I'm going to give different fonts. We're going to try to do everything different on this page. Now, the header I'm going to give it a width of 800 pixels. Yeah. I'm going to specify the top of it is 30 pixels. The left is 30 pixels. The background is white. The padding is five pixels. Border We'll pick that yellow again. I'm going to write out each property. So this is border color. Border style. Solid. Border radius. Oh, uh, border width. 10px border radius fifty px. Now one thing I forgot here, and I'm going to put it right after the top and the left, is position absolute. Position absolute means it's going to be glued in that position on the page. So it's going to be glued 30 pixels to the left of the top of the page, or 30 pixels from the left of the page, 30 pixels from the top of the page. And it's glued there. If you scroll, it will scroll off the page because it's glued to that corner of the page. Now watch this. There's going to be something that we don't necessarily like about this. Let me do this real quick before we criticize it. I'm going to put I'm going to give a background white to the other things so that we can see what's really happening here. I'm 
notice how they're kind of overlapping. All right. The reason for this is we've given a position to one of the things on the page, but not to the other things of the page. All right. So far in this class, we've not given position to anything. We've just let the browser place things in order. That is called the flow layout. In other words, the flow layout says the first things on the top of the page, first block elements on the top of the page, the second one's underneath that, the third one is underneath that, the fourth one's underneath that. When you give something a position, it breaks it out of the flow. It says put it in a specific position. The other things, though, stay in that flow. The bottom line is if I give one thing a position, I'm probably going to need to give the other things a position, too. All right? Because otherwise, it's going to overlap them like this. So what I have to do is I have to give the navigation a position, I have to give the section a position, and I have to give a, the footer a position. All right? So let's go and do that. I'm going to make it a little less wide, so I'll say 600. I'm actually going to copy this and just change the things that I want to change. The nav. I don't want to be 30 pixels from the top. That would put it right on top of the header. I will put it, let's say, 130 pixels from the top. I do want the nav to be 30 pixels from the left, though. And I want the position to be absolute. The rest of these things will keep. I'm just eyeballing and guessing things at this point. The width 100, uh, oh, the width of this, I don't want to be 600. I'll make it something like 200. And the width of this one, I'll make like 300. The top will be still 130. The left will be maybe like 250. And the footer. Width will be 600 again. The top will be maybe 3, 430, and the left will be 30. Let's see what this looks like, just me guessing at these values. All right, sort of there. I need the section and the navigation down, and I want, probably want to space the section out a little bit to the to the uh, right. So I'll go in and put both these down a little bit. And yeah, that's, we'll say that's, you know, we'll, we'll call it a day. We'll say, we'll say that's how we want to do that one. All right, we could tweak it if we wanted to, but that's basically what I want. So this is sort of a different layout for it. The difference is this is fixed. This is, we define specifically where from the top of the, of the page, not from the top of the window, but from the top of the page where this goes. This is 30 from the top, 30 from the left. Which means that if we scroll the page, or if we resize the page, or whatever, this doesn't move. This is inflexible. Something like this is useful if you have a very precise layout that you want to look identical across platforms. Something like some of these very elaborate layouts on CSS Zen Garden. I would imagine used fixed layout simply because they have a very specific way they want this to look. Maybe not any of these, but 
that one. Notice that this doesn't change. Well, it does change. So that does not use the fixed layout. You can tell it uses a fixed layout if you reposition the, the page and it doesn't change. Yes? How do they do what lines? Well, how do you think they did them? Yes, probably with a border attribute. Right, just just using yeah, just that Pro probably yeah, probably a border, but just a border just on the top. Hmm. Border is just like padding and all that. It exists in four directions. So if you just say border, you'll get all four directions. If you say border top, then you can set the border on the top. Border bottom, you can set the border on the bottom. We'll end here. We'll go through more examples of this where we give different looks. And notice, I have not touched the HTML today. The HTML is identical. We get these two different pages that look way different. This one, actually three pages. This one, this one, and this one. Three different pages have the identical HTML. We've just changed the appearance and the layout with CSS. And we could make it, you know, if we were to change colors and other things, we could make them look even more different, add different background images and so on. So we'll continue this. We'll use this as an exercise to learn about CSS layout and just to have fun and play around with CSS. All right, we'll see you up in lab.